Hey family, it's good to see you. My name is Eddie. I wish I could see you in person, but I'm glad that you're here. Thanks for joining us back on the live stream. I hope that you're well. My name is Eddie, like I said. I'm the lead pastor of Grace Covenant Church in Sterling. Uh, and I'm excited to be able to spend some time with you in the Word. You know, we have been... This is uh, really the third week of live streaming, and, and we're trying to figure out what it looks like to to navigate this this situation in life that we're all trying to figure out, where we're social distancing and we're staying in groups of ten or less and trying to to stay at home. Some of us in other parts are, are even um, they're sheltering in their houses, and and there's a lot of circumstances around our lives that are are challenging us. They're, they're calling into question our, our strength, our, our foundation, and really what we believe about provision. And so today I wanted to look at what God has to say to us, what He wants to encourage us with uh, when we consider our circumstances. So we're going to be reading out of the book of 1 Kings, uh, chapter, uh, sorry, chapter 17, verses 8 through 16. And as we read this, I want you to have this question in your mind. In these uncertain circumstances, who do you look to to provide? In these uncertain circumstances, who do you look to to provide? I'm going to read the, the passage. This is 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 8 and following. Then the word of the Lord came to him, Arise and go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he rose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Bring me a little water in this vessel, or in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. And now I am gathering a couple sticks that I may go and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, Do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but first make a little cake of it and bring it to me, and afterwards make some for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of flour shall not be spent, and the jug of oil shall not be empty until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And she went and did as Elijah said. And she and her, he and her household ate for many days. The jar of flour was not spent, neither did the jug of oil become empty, according to the word of the Lord that he had spoke by Elijah. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that you love us, that you care about us, that you're both good and great, that you are good and your word says that you work all things for the good of those who are called according to your purposes, and that you are great in that you are able to work all things according to the, the purpose of your will, that you're able to do as you please, that you are omnipotent and all-powerful, that you are sovereign. This combination allows us to trust in you, God, and I pray that you would raise our faith to the level of looking over our circumstances to the God over our circumstances. I pray that you would help us in your word to trust you more. Be with us as we study your word together. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, family, this is a this is a difficult situation that, that Elijah finds himself in. If you go to chapter 1 of verse 17, we find out that Elijah is this prophet, this, this man from uh, Tishba. He's a Tishbite, and he has, he has told uh, Ahab, an evil king, that there's no, not going to be any rain until he says so. And so there's this drought that's coming into the land, and with the drought comes a famine. And, and so he himself is in the midst of this problem, and he finds himself having to uh, drink from a stream and eat from ravens, that's crows, that they're, they're carrion feeders, and so they're bringing him bread and, and, and meat, and he's having to live really by faith in God. There's, it's a difficult situation, and, and God is orchestrating in Elijah's life and in the lives of those in Israel and, and here in, in Zarephath, he, he's orchestrating a situation where his power and his greatness can be shown through their need. Now, family, you and I, we often, we want to see God's power. We want to see him do amazing things. We love the idea of a miracle. We love the idea of, of God feeding 5,000 and, and Jesus doing amazing things that, that show his power, his strength, his might, his sovereignty. 
But at the same time, if we're honest, if you're anything like me, maybe you're not as interested in the circumstances that require that kind of power. I know for me, the idea of seeing God move powerfully is great, but, but I don't want the circumstances where I need him to move powerfully. I, I love the idea of God being faithful to provide uh, uh, money so that I can buy things, but I don't want to be in a position where I have to be asking God for that kind of power, asking God for that kind of faithfulness, asking God for that kind of provision. And here we see that God is orchestrating a situation where Elijah's need, this widow's need, they're they're going to be calling out for a miracle of God. There's a need for a provision. And and that that is where Elijah and this widow, and really you and I find ourselves. He goes on in verses eight and following. He says, then the word of the Lord came to him, came to Elijah, arise and go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he arose and went to Zarephath. Now, Zarephath is, is on the far north. Uh, it's, it's north of Israel, and, and it's part of this area called Sidon, and it's an area where Baal is worshipped. It, it, the, the idol Baal is, is prominent in this area, and in fact, it's, it's a sinful area. There's, there's a lot of evil things that are happening there, and so this prophet, he goes from bad, drinking from a stream, eating from, from crows, to, to really worse. I want you to go to this sin city. I want you to go to this area where, where evil things are happening. And you have to imagine that, that Elijah is asking himself, well, what am I to do here? I don't want to go to this place. I want to see God's power, but I want to see it in the context of a, of a happy, good, kind, loving, God-fearing place. But God calls him to this place of darkness so that his light might show. And we see, how does he respond? He arose and went to Zarephath. Now, we don't hear that he, he had this particular emotional response or this thought process, but we see simply that he obeyed God. Now, family, you may be in a circumstance, and we're going to talk about this more with, our, with the widow, but you may be in a circumstance where you're thinking things and you're feeling things, and those thoughts and feelings militate against a faith in God. But the the key in that moment is is simple obedience that comes from faith. He obeys and he goes. We see that God prepares for provision for Elijah and and for this widow. If we go and read further, it says in verse 10, And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Bring me a little water and a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to bring it, he called her and said, Hey, bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. And now I'm going to gather, gathering a couple of sticks that I may go and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. See, Elijah had been sent into a situation where, where God has prepared a... a salvation. He's prepared a provision in advance. We, we see that, that he arose and went to this place because God had promised that there's a widow who's going to provide for you. He says that in verse, um, verse uh, 9, before, I've commanded a widow there to feed you. And we see that God has pre- prepared a way for this widow. She doesn't know necessarily that God has prepared this man to come into her life to be the, the, the mode and the medium of blessing. So she's preparing to die right? He's prepared this, this provision in advance. Uh, but he finds the widow, and she is, she's looking at her circumstances, and, and she realizes that, that her circumstances are going to trust or try test her trust in God. At this point, uh, we see that she is looking at her last meal. She says, as the Lord your God lives, Right? She doesn't even consider the Lord to be her God at this point. But as the Lord, your God, lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little jug. And I am going, as she goes on to say, to prepare for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. She has been, if you put, put yourself in her shoes, she's been uh, looking at starvation. This is not something that's happened over a short period of time. She's been rationing her food, preparing it, hoping that something will change over a period of time. She's been looking at her son, and, and likely if they're at this point where they're going to eat a meal and then die, that they, they have been starving for a, a while. This is not a new problem. 
this is, this is not a, a surprise problem, but it's, this is something that they've been looking at. These circumstances have been pressing in and pressing in and pressing in at her. God has brought her to a place of profound need. But it's a place of profound need in order that he might show her his abundant provision. Family, you may be in a position of profound, profound need. Many people in our nation are in a position of profound need, need for healing, need for for financial provision, need for uh, familial help and support. And, And you might be thinking to yourself, God, where are you in this moment? Where are you? What are you doing? Surely you can't be involved in this. What are you doing, God? Why have you left me? Just as this widow might have been thinking to herself, God, where are you? Or maybe God's. We don't know who she worships or what she believes, but but clearly she's looking at death. And God brought her to a place of profound need, and he will bring you and I to a place of profound need. And and sometimes when we look at these things, we we think, okay, I need to pray harder. I need to read my Bible letter, and I'm going to get myself out of the situation. I'm going to escape this circumstance. I'm going to escape this trial. I'm going to escape this suffering. But sometimes our situation, our circumstances, they aren't things that God is going to uh, deliver us from as much as he's going to deliver us through. Sometimes the way forward is not around or above or under, but through faith. Read verse 13 and 14 with me. Elijah said to her in her response, you know, we don't have any food. I'm about to eat and die. Do not fear. Go and do as you've said, but first make a little cake of it and bring it to me, and afterwards make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of flour shall not be spent, and the jug of oil shall not be empty until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. Elijah tests her faith. He he basically says, "I, I have a God, and he's made a promise to me. This God has made a promise that he's going to provide for you. He's going to care for you. He's going to meet your needs. But but you need to exercise faith. You need to exercise faith to trust him. You can trust him because he's going to provide. Family, what are you trusting in right now? If you don't know how to answer that question, just think to yourself, when I feel the pinch of my circumstance, when I feel the pinch of the trials that I'm experiencing, when I feel the, the pinch of, of the pain that I'm in, what do I run to? Do I run to my job? I'm going to control my, my provision. I'm going to work harder. I'm going to make sure that I'm, I'm doing all that I can do so I don't get laid off. Am I, am I trusting my health? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work hard and be healthy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure that I'm, I'm not touching anything. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be super careful with my, my hygiene to make sure that, that if other people get sick, but I'm not going to get sick. Are you trusting your, your family and your relationships? I got to make sure that I, I keep in contact with these people and, and they're my lifeline. And, and if I don't connect with them, I'm going to feel alone and lonely and, and, and disconnected and, and incapable of moving forward in life. What are you trusting in? That, that thing that you're trusting in, that's what you are looking to to be your provider. God challenges us, widow, and says, I've made a promise to you, I will be your provider. He says this through Elijah, I will provide for your needs, but you need to express faith through obedience. Our trust in God is proved by our obedience. Of all these different things that we're trusting in, we're looking to, God is saying, if you will trust me, if you will put your faith in me, I will provide. In Matthew chapter 6, we see a similar conversation where Jesus is talking about why we shouldn't worry. How we, how we don't need to be concerned with the future. He says, do not be anxious about your life, what you'll eat or what you drink or your body or, or what you'll pair, put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? And he goes on to say, God cares about the birds. He cares about the grass. He provides for them both. And aren't you more important than him? He says in verse 30, but if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? He says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, but act on faith, but believe by faith and obey in faith and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. There is a promise that God has for you, family. There's a promise that God has to provide for you physically, emotionally, spiritually. He has promised to do so as we exercise faith. And our trust 
is proved by our obedience. We see that the widow trusts God and God was faithful to provide. It says in verses 15 and 16, and she went and did as Elijah said, just like Elijah earlier on, he arose and went to Zarephath like he was commanded to do. She went and did as Elijah said. Family, it's simple obedience that God is looking for. Sometimes we want a craft of complex, uh, robust solution to, to overcome our circumstance. We're trying to figure out, how can I control all of these things? How can I, okay, what, what do I need to do? What, what systems do I need to set in place to make sure my kids don't act crazy? What, what systems do I need to put in place so that I, I make sure that I, I do my job to the best of my ability and I don't lose my job? What do I need to do to make sure that I'm, I'm getting, keeping all these, these plates in the air? And what God is looking for is not some sort of complex system, but simple, basic obedience to what he's called us to do and believe. She went and did as Elijah said. And then what happens? The jar of flour was not spent. And it says, and she and he and her household ate for many days, many days. The jar of flour was not spent, neither did the jug of oil become empty, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. God's abundant, radical, perfect provision met her need perfectly. There was an intersection of her real, absolute, factual need and God's real, absolute, factual provision where her faith and obedience was. Our faith and God's provision to bless blesses her and it blesses us and it blesses those around us. Listen to this. It says she and he, talking about Elijah, and her household ate for many days. Not only did God's provision provide for her, but it provided for Elijah. Not only did it provide for Elijah, it provided for her household. Family, when we exercise faith and obedience, it doesn't just bless you and me. This is one of the reasons why the church is not individuals disconnected from other people, because God's plan, it was for your faith and my faith to be a blessing, not only to you and me, but to everyone else. Your faith is intended to bless and have a ripple effect of provision for other people. My faith is intended to be uh, a blessing and have a ripple effect for other people. God's provision is not just for you. God's provision is not just for me. God's provision is for all of us. Her provision by God was for those around her. And your faith and my faith in God is intended not just to be something that that gets us out of hell, that gets us to heaven, but it's intended to be something that blesses those around us, blesses our brothers and sisters in Christ, blesses the community around us. Now, family, the good news is that that Elijah, he he is, this is an amazing real story, but it's also a picture of of a greater prophet who was to come later, Jesus Christ. And and I I think I mentioned before, but, but Jesus or Elijah is a picture, he's a type of Christ. He's an example, a, a, an earthy predecessor to Christ who gives us a picture of what Jesus came to do. And in the same way that Elijah came bringing the provision of God, Jesus came bringing God's provision to us. You and I, we have not only physical needs, not only emotional needs, we have, we have spiritual needs. At our foundation, our, our deepest need is not just to have food or to have housing or to have uh relationships, our deepest need is to be reconciled to the God of the universe, the one who created us, the one who's given us purpose, the one who has a plan for our life. But because of sin, because of uh, the drought, the famine of of our our wickedness in our own souls, in my soul and your soul, we are separated from God. And God in his infinite, gracious provision so loves the world, as John 3.16 says, that he gives He gives his son so that whoever believes in him, whoever trusts in him, whoever puts their faith in him, whoever obeys him will have eternal life, will have provision, will have life, will have abundance. Who are you trusting to provide today, family? Family, God is a good God. We see in this this story of the widow and and Elijah that God wants to provide, that he's provided planned to provide even before you knew you had a need, that his provision is abundant, and that he he is superintending your situation. He's superintending your life. And he's just saying, come to me and trust me. How, how do we do that today? 
What does it look like for you to walk out this faith? One of the things you can do is you take these things that you trust, you take the fears that you have, and you bring them to God in prayer. As we read in Matthew chapter 6, it says, do not be anxious, but, but trust in God. And we can, we can trust in God by taking our anxieties to God. God, I'm, I'm worried about this situation. God, I'm concerned about this situation. God, I'm, I'm, I'm worried about, about this thing, this need that I have. And we take it to God. But once we take it to God, we say, God, you are good and you have provided. You've promised to provide. He promises in Matthew 6 to provide for our needs. He promises to be our savior. He promises to be a refuge. He promises to be our God. He promises to be our good father. He's made promise, family. If we trust him and allow our, our trust and our faith to result in obedience, simple obedience of, of walking out this faith in him, we will experience his abundant blessing. God is your provider and he's, he has an abundant supply of grace for you today. Let's pray. Father God, I want to remind myself that you are good, that you are a good God, first and foremost. You are worthy of my praise, of my, my purpose, my life, my devotion. And I thank you, God, that, that you look at my circumstances and you craft them in such a way that my need rises so that your abundant provision might rise. God, would you help me to trust you, the provider, rather than the provision itself? Would you help me to trust you, the provider, rather than these other substandard false providers? Would you help me to trust you, the provider, over and above all else? I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. If you've never trusted in Jesus to be your provider, today's the day to do it. If you've never trusted God to be faithful to his promises to provide, he promises to do so. He says in so many different ways in the New Testament that if we put our faith in him, he is faithful to forgive us our sins, to deal with that debt. He's faithful to give us new life. He's faithful to give us eternal life. He's faithful to walk with us and be present with us. He's faithful to pour out his love in our hearts through his Holy Spirit. God is a faithful God. And if you trust him today, he will be faithful to provide for all of your needs. If that's you, if you've, if you've put your faith in him, if you've turned away from everything you know to be sin and you turn to him, we would love to connect with you. I'd love for you to reach out to someone on Facebook, one of our, our Facebook hosts, or if you're watching this on the, on the website, for you to reach out to us by uh, emailing sterling at gracecub.org and just let us connect with you. Let us walk this, this faith out with you. As we close, family, I just wanna remind you there are a few things that we're doing to, to be an abundant blessing a, and a, a provision for our community. God has blessed us and we want our faith to result in blessing our community. We are meeting at Dominion High School on Tuesdays and Fridays from 12 to 3 to collect food for about 200, and the need is growing, but about 200 students. There are these students who are in need. They need food to be provided for them. And so we're collecting from, from you, the congregation, as well as the, the surrounding community to support Dominion High School we love this school. We love this community. We, we believe that God has placed us here strategically to support them, and we ask that you would help us in that respect. If, you, if you're curious about what we're collecting, uh, right now it's food, but that may change. If you check us out on Facebook or look at our website, we'll, we'll post those needs uh, continually as they, as they change. But would you step out in faith, and would one of your, your ways of stepping out in faith and, and blessing others through the God, blessing that God gives you, would you consider giving in this way? Now it's time for us to, to close. And so let me say this to you. May the God of hope fill you with all hope and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Family, I love you. You're awesome.